So one person I very much wouldn't want to be as I speak to you in this moment is the favorite little girl of old Donnie, the favorite little girl of the loser ex-president, Ivanka Trump, because she just took a massive defeat, really two defeats, one of them legal and one of them reputational, and they're both directly connected to her dad and the recent transcripts and all of the analysis coming out of that. And it's also anchored in a critical piece of visual evidence, a, a key photo that absolutely nails her and is now in the hands of investigators at the state and other levels as well. And this puts her in big trouble, largely because the main area where Ivanka is facing peril connects to taxes and finances around her dad because, you know, her dad and the company and she are all involved in this trial together. Watch this. It really nails Trump and Ivanka. And then we're going to get into the piece most specifically to her, which also tears down the very thing that she values most of all. The real question here that we now have access to his tax returns, which he so vehemently fought in order to protect, is we now know the truth about Donald. We know that, first and foremost, he's not as rich as he claimed during all those years. OK, that's just one in a basket of lies. But what it also does is it proves what I had said at the time of my House Oversight Committee hearing, that he inflates his assets for his net worth, for his personal financial statement, so that he can get benefits, whether it's on loans, whether it's with insurance, whether it was uh, trying to get a deal like the old post office or the Doral or any of the other acquisitions that he did. He takes the same assets and he devalues them for tax purposes. That's illegal in and of itself right there. And that's what I was referring to when I was on your show and we talked about his triplex apartment, which is not 33,000 square feet and over 300 million, it's 11,000 square feet and the price per square foot that he was referencing in the personal financial statement is completely overinflated. These were done with intent. And again, as I expressed, the intent was solely to keep himself high up on that Forbes list, which was incredibly important to him. But more than that, it was to be able to use the personal financial statement so that he could benefit from that as well. Michael, what do you think drove Trump to fight so hard and to use his own Treasury Department? And we don't know what we don't know about what pressure he may have placed on the IRS as well to shield these returns from public view. Was it not wanting people to see how often he failed in business? Or was it not wanting people to see how little he paid in taxes? Or are they inextricably linked? I mean, what was he hiding? Everything, right? I mean, everything <laughs> across the board and then some. One of the things, of course, again, is the fact that he's not as wealthy as he purported. But also, he's clearly not as charitable as he wanted to purport. And then on top of everything, the way that he used the system, for example— and I'm sure David could speak to this at length. But one of the things that he would do is he would take worthless land at the back of some of the golf courses and he would then donate it as a deduction. The problem is that he would take that piece of property and he would value it the same as usable property, despite the fact that this property was marshland. It was underwater. And he would then take that property, deduct it and you know, just not a proper deduction. And that's how he ended up, again, with that $10 million check plus a whole lot more over the years. Is that illegal? Proper. And, you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of people that will have to answer, including the people from the state who ended up accepting it and not challenging when he donated, for yeah. example, 10 acres, claimed each one of those acres was worth a million dollars. Why they just fell for whatever it was that Trump and Weisselberg and others said, I truly don't know the answer. But it, th again, what it goes to is failures in our system of checks and balances, especially on the uber rich. There's a failure of checks and balances. And while he is responsible for that, 
because he put that down in the tax returns and so on. I think there are other people that need to be held accountable as well. David, I want to give you sort of a, a two part question here and then and then let you go. I mean, one, what sticks out for you in, in terms of your first look? These just came out this morning. And two, wh where you think the new buckets of, of questions are after seeing this today? Well, I'll tell you two things that stand out. The first one was, uh, remember Trump, before he took office, said he would donate all his presidential salary. He doesn't need the money. The very common <laughs> thing he had done with uh, donations his entire life. He'd always said, oh, I'm doing this new thing, but I don't need the money. I'm going to donate it. And what we had found before he took office was that he often didn't live up to those promises. And what we see in these returns is apparently that he didn't do it again. His promise to donate his presidential salary seems to have petered out in 2020, the last year of his presidency. We see no donations, no no donations to, of his salary or anything else, zero in donations. That's one thing. The other thing, and I'm sure uh, Michael was unsurprised by this, was we spent all this time talking about Trump the businessman. What is he doing? This He has this genius. What are his plans? I would spent a lot of time trying to figure out what his different businesses were doing. And come to find out, the only really success he had during his four years as president was due to his father, Fred Trump. The one good mm. year he had, according to these tax returns, was when he sold some of the last pieces of Fred Trump, who was by then had been long dead, of Fred Trump's real estate empire. All the things mm -hmm. we wrote about, all the big developments, those lost money. Fred Trump from the grave was the only person who helped Donald Trump's empire this entire time. I mean, Michael Cohen, does that explain the fervor to keep this secret, that he was not good at business? Yeah, and uh, just to add to David, one of the other uh, successful ventures that he's part of is a venture with Vornado that he doesn't even control. They control it and they're really professional. And so when they refinanced, he had his percentage. And that, of course, all goes from what occurred on the West Side Highway when he took over that property. But there are so many things that are coming out right now. The volume of information that's coming out, it's so, it's so enormous that it's going yeah. to take some time to digest. One of the things that we all had seen as well is the way that they manipulated the numbers, for example, with his aircrafts under, for example, the company is called TAG, T-A-G, Trump Aviation Group. But the way that Donald Trump would set up these companies is that TAG would have sub entities underneath them. So one would be, for example, his trust, and the other would be another incorporated LLC that they would use as a additional layer of protection. If you notice, it claimed, for example, that he had earned $860,000 for the use of the plane, but the expenses equaled exactly 806 or whatever the exact number was. That's extremely curious, especially if you're a forensic accountant or now the IRS. But the same thing happened with the helicopters. And again, it's the same way that they established the companies, the big LLC, then the sub LLCs. And it's also, again, difficult for the IRS to track what's going on here. Well, now they have plenty of time and there's going to be plenty of people taking a look at all of these documents. And my feeling is, is his goose is cooked. We are learning several new revealing details this morning about what happened in the Trump White House before, during and after the January 6th Capitol attack. The January 6th House Select Committee released a new trove of deposition transcripts from key witnesses late yesterday, including former head of personnel at the White House, John McEntee. He told the House panel former President Donald Trump wanted to issue blanket pardons for everyone who participated in the attack, saying, quote, the president floated the idea and Pat Cipollone said no, referring to former White House counsel Pat Cipollone. McEntee continued, I remember the president saying, well, what if I pardoned the people that weren't violent, that just walked into the building? And I think the White House counsel gave him some pushback on that, end quote. More newly released transcripts reveal former President Trump also considered firing any member of his staff who did not believe the 2020 election was stolen from him. Cipollone mentioned a memo that stated, quote, anybody that thinks there wasn't massive fraud in the 2020 election should be fired, end quote. Former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson added this about that memo, telling the panel she addressed Cipollone about it, saying, quote, Pat looked at it. He said something to the effect of God, no. But Cipollone said he did not remember that interaction. 
What's more, former White House Communications Director Alyssa Farah Griffin spoke to the January 6th House panel on April 15th, describing her tenure at the Trump White House as, quote, a wild eight months. Griffin revealed one serious and ongoing problem was a lack of organization, to the surprise of no one. She described a Trump White House in which jobs were filled with underqualified staff because more senior government officials would not take positions within the administration. She said any report about the Trump White House being chaotic and operating without structure was, quote, more or less accurate. That included there being no competent gatekeeper to stop harmful or unhelpful information from getting to then President Trump, which led to this moment in April of 2020 at the start of the COVID pandemic. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. Well, the right, folks, you could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning, because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. So you can see there that first one really outlines how insane all of this was. And it gets to what we're going to talk about with Ivanka, which is that one of the things she said, one of the, the excuses she gave for why she never quit daddy when he was in the White House, even after he did evil thing and evil thing and evil thing, was I needed to be there as a voice of reason, a voice of moderation. If I left, it would only be the crazies and I was like the thin blonde line between anarchy and, and order in the Trump regime. But it turns out that the crazies were taking over anyway and, you know, as noted with the Cohen stuff, that's value because what it shows is one it's embarrassing to trump and i love to see michael cohen get a little bit of karmic hilarious revenge well you know whether he lied about making donations whether he lied about the value of his worth either negatively or positively to benefit him in certain contexts you know the specifics don't matter as much as the general sense which is that this man used the tax system to cheat the american worker and to cheat probably lenders and things like that as well. And why this matters is that whenever you're talking about fudging the numbers or messing up with the numbers on Trump's individual taxes, you can't disconnect that from the Letitia James case because it's all one big stinky ball, which includes Ivanka and her brothers and the company and daddy because the, the Trump organization is basically Trump and you can't separate it all. And that's bad. But one particular piece of evidence that it's been photographed from the written transcripts. It's been recorded there and now shared with the world again in the hands of investigators everywhere is this quote about how Ivanka never had the power that she thought she had. And it says Alyssa Farah Griffin, who served as director of strategy communications for Donald Trump toward the end of the presidency, testified before the panel that she uh, that she revealed the former president's eldest daughter and his longtime advisor, Hope Hicks, did not have a moderating influence. Quote, there's a handful of sort of myths that have been created, and I don't know if it's like people pulled certain PR or what, but there seems to be this narrative that Hope Hicks could get through to him and push back on him. I never once saw Hope Hicks push back on him and that Ivanka was like the voice of reason and could get him to change his mind. I like Ivanka. She's very decent to me, but I never once saw her change her opinion on anything. Griffin also cited an example in Lafayette Square where federal agents violently cleared peaceful protesters to make way for Trump to pose with a Bible in response to this. And it notes that, you know, if anything, Ivanka and Jared pushed that idea as some sort of law and order thing. So in, in actuality, more often than not, when they were trying to push back, it didn't work and it was not nearly as often as they would like to think and often they were pushing bad ideas actively onto Trump which he followed so this is devastating for Ivanka and it's big news for Letitia James who gets these tax returns and all of the context behind them which will nail her and her brothers and her dad and the family company and again this photographic evidence you have the the, 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 the image files and whatnot of these transcripts tears into her personally as well just a devastating day